Yeah. Um, Des, uh, Des Nobles is going to talk about um, local knowledge and stakeholder knowledge. Take it away. Thank you, Gord. Uh, first, I'd just like to take a moment and uh, acknowledge the passing of Jackie Booth and pass on my condolences to her family. Secondly, I'd like to acknowledge the Musqueam Nation and thank you them for their welcome into their territory. Russ has very nicely and succinctly put together what I was going to say. I could probably just sit down and we could call it a day and we might not have to go any further. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a moment to sort of introduce our MLA from Skeena. Uh, North Coast, pardon me, Gary Coons, who's uh, the only elected official that's actually arrived here today to, to join us. Thank you very much. That being said, <laughs> Russ uh, intimated that the traditional knowledge that he is speaking of with regards to the Haida Nations and First Nations on the coast in general uh, is very important to how we're going to approach Pensima and how we're going to fill some of the knowledge gaps that exist. I would suggest to you that the local knowledge that I'm about to speak to is very interchangeable with that, tech, or that traditional knowledge, and Russ has made note of that as well. The two are almost inseparable, and in many cases, the, the people that are providing this information are one and the same. The commercial fishing industry, of which I was a part for many years, is in my part of the world, in Pensima, predominantly First Nations. The, uh, the First Nations and, and those that are non-First Nations within that, that particular community, the, the commercial fishing community, have spent an immense amount of time within those waters. And that being the case, I think they have some, some very significant knowledge to share with us and to provide with us. Russ provided a, a bit of a, <clears throat> a bit of a explanation of what traditional knowledge was in, in a very sort of structured form. I tried to capture in, in a very short phrase what, what I viewed as, as, as what local knowledge is. And in short, it's the intimate understanding of place. And that sort of encapsulates what took place with those of us that, that fish. We spent an immense amount of time within a specific area learning that area well. From my perspective, it's actually a scientific experiment, and it's done in a very rigorous manner. We create hypothesis. We set our gear. We haul our gear back. We revise our hypothesis. We either <laughs> caught fish or we didn't. That's a reality. Uh, but it's also very important to keep in mind that if we failed often enough, we didn't survive either. So it was extremely important that we not get it wrong too many times, and I'm sure that's the exact same case with traditional knowledge. It's learning very quickly how to survive. And this information, although it's not quantified particularly, it's extremely important. A number of groups have tried to sort of garner this knowledge and, and, and compile it in a form that's usable. Living Oceans, World Wildlife Fund, a number have, have tried to do this and haven't been particularly successful. They've, they've managed to garner some knowledge, but not a lot. And the reason for that is, is that traditionally, the commercial fishing industry has protected that knowledge from others because without that knowledge, they would not survive and they would not have the edge to do better than the fellow next to them. So if it was exchanged, it was exchanged only with those whom they trusted or with whom they were either integrally related, family. So where does this knowledge reside? Well, to be perfectly honest, all of us here hold a kernel of local knowledge of one form or another for the place where you live just based on the time and the frequency with which you access that place. And within the context of Pensima, it resides in great part within the commercial salmon fishery and within the commercial halibut fishery and within the commercial sable fish fishery. It's those places that hold this reservoir. The commercial fishing industry, as I pointed out, is, is quite a diverse group. You can't go to one individual fisherman or one particular gear type and expect to garner the information required to fulfill our needs. You're going to have to, in the end, go to every fisherman that's out there because each fisherman fished a different spot and he would fish it in a different way based on the knowledge that he had of that spot. Many of us over years spent our whole lives literally within a very small space perfecting that ability and that's what allowed us to maintain our lives and our livelihoods. How accessible is this information? I'd suggest that it's not all that accessible at all. As I pointed out earlier, it's, it's extremely protected. It's not something that was given lightly. 
So there's going to have to be a great degree of trust built between this process and the commercial industry so that that information can be given and used for the betterment of all. I've always considered information as sort of useless stuff because information is usually things that you keep to yourself. Information has no value until it's shared. Then it becomes knowledge. And until we begin to share the information that's trapped within the commercial industry, we will be at a great loss. One of the things that concerns me at this point is that due to policy changes and management structures within the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, the fisheries that I conducted and worked in over the years have changed significantly. Changed to the point where at this time, they're no longer able to provide much of the information that we had in the past. And for us to actually garner what we need from this, we're going to have to go to those fishermen that are no longer part of the industry, bring them back out again, and mine the depths of their <coughs> knowledge. Because that is where the true knowledge is, is in those early fisheries, when we fished over wide areas, when we fished over wide geographic spots, different terrains. And each gear type has a different bit of knowledge to provide. Those that fished the surface and the pelagic areas have one knowledge to provide us. Those that fished the bottoms, the draggers, the longliners, all of these people would provide us with another set of data that we can enter into the overall picture so that we can garner that, that big picture view that we're going to need to actually come to the decisions within Pansema. And if we don't do this, I would suggest to you, it's at our peril and will be a great loss to society in general. In turn, I would also suggest to those fishermen that are still out there and plying their trade, give it up, folks, all right? The reality is with a bloody GPS, the guy next to you can know everything you know in about half an hour, so don't worry about sharing what you got anymore. It's more important now to share it with all of us here, with the groups and with the people in which you live, so that we can come to some rational decisions about how we're going to move forward in this process. Because again, as I've pointed out, if we don't, this process will not succeed. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans over the last 10 to 15 years has not had the capacity scientifically to provide the information that's out there already. The data that they're collecting today has no bearing on what was happening five, 10 years ago. And in many cases, it's so narrow in its focus, it's not even applicable in most of the decision-making processes that we're presently dealing with. It just becomes statistical background noise. So I'd sort of like to leave it at that. Where I see the future of this going is that, again, it's very integral if we're going to move forward in the Pensima process to garner this knowledge. And, and I would ask all of you to please come together, begin to share that knowledge. Those of you that are looking for it, treat the people that you're going to for this knowledge with extreme respect because what they give you is what made them. It's a part of them. It's not separate from, and they do not give it gladly, they do not give it easily. But once you garner the trust, the reality is, is that you will mine the depths of knowledge that the Department of Fisheries and Oceans will never be able to provide us. And in conjunction with the First Nations, with their local and traditional knowledge, I believe we will create a picture that will allow us to make the decisions that we need to make. Thank you. Interesting stuff. When information is shared, it becomes knowledge. I'm going to remember that. <laughs>